So John Waters' Pink Flamingos was released in 1972, and at the time it was said to be one of the filthiest films ever. And I think it still holds up to that title. So the film's plot is pretty simple. It follows this infamous criminal called Divine, and she's been given the title in the media as the filthiest person alive. And so she lives in this trailer with her family, and the conflict of the story comes when a other criminal married couple find out that she has been given this title and they want to reclaim it from her, so they try to sabotage her. It, it is very, very disgusting. I, I feel like this film does not exist in our world. This film is working on a different wavelength, uh, a different realm, and it's very hyper real, and you kind of don't believe sometimes what you're seeing. Um, and that's what makes it really interesting and special. And you don't know what you're going to expect. It, it, I love the way that the film plays with structure, and it doesn't really follow like a character's journey or anything like that. Like I feel like the divine character is just as bad as she was at the beginning of the movie, if not worse. And in the film, I mean, the film is just outright hilarious. It still really works. And I would love to see this with a crowd sometime in a theater. Now, if you're not familiar with John Waters or the character Divine, Divine was this character that an actor by the name of Glenn Milstead played. And it's a very iconic character. A lot of drag queens um, have, you know, said that this was their inspiration. Um, it's a very famous image. And John Waters is this gay filmmaker from Baltimore and he was one of the original, you know, OG do-it-yourself filmmakers where he just went out and did it, you know, despite, you know, not having a lot of money or or getting a green light from a studio, he just went out and made these movies. I, mean, I feel like a film like this couldn't be made nowadays. I mean, the closest relative I feel like is probably a Borat or or Jackass or something like that. So John Waters claims the reason that Pink Flamingos blew up, whereas his other films didn't, was that it, at the, it came out at the right time because this was back when films like Deep Throat, you know, adult films were becoming more popular. And so it was seen as like this intellectual status symbol. You understood something. You, you, you knew about, you know, something deeper in the culture that other people didn't. I, I feel like this film pushed, you know, the queer topics and queer ideas into the minds of people who wouldn't otherwise have, you know, heard about that stuff. And why I think we need pink flamingos more now than ever is that we're living in this super hypersensitive time where even members of our own community, you know, are silencing what can and can't be said. There's no laughing at ourselves and how ridiculous we are sometimes. And John Waters was ahead of the curve and he still is. Now, Pink Flamingos is a film that is still relevant today. Go in with an open mind if you're easily offended, avoid it at all costs. But this is a film that's super important then, and it is still important now. And I think we need more films that push the limits, push, push the boundaries of, of what we're comfortable with. That's really the only way that we move forward. Whenever I think of John Waters, I think of that clip uh, where Werner Herzog discovered that he was gay. After 35 years of, of knowing John Waters, I, I turned to my wife and I said to her, I have the feeling this man is gay. <laughs> Can't believe you are gay. I thought it, I, I, I always think about that.